Yes, crew, how you doing? So here's something a bit different. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a bit. Uh, I was having a go at the kids' keyboard the other day and realised that some of the pads on this Casio here were actually pretty useful. Nice. <laughs> so I took a minute today while the kids were having their screen time and did a bit of sampling, uh, got them in the hardware and had a little bit of a play around. So I'm going to give you a bit of a walkthrough um, and there'll be a link in the description and you can grab the pads that I've made. It's just a few to start with. All right, so first I'm sampling into the DAW. Um, I'm using Ableton for this. I do use Ableton to create sounds, even though obviously I predominantly sequence on Octomed and use the hardware. Um, it's still really useful to have a DAW to make some sounds in. So we're going to sample a chord onto a track in Ableton and then I'm going to pitch it up. First, I'll have to turn the warp function off inside Ableton. Uh, by pitching it up, I make the sample a bit smaller, which will save some memory space inside the EMU, which is the one I'm, the sampler I'm going to use for today's little exercise. Um, the reason I'm using the EMU one is because um, it's stereo, which is going to be nice for pads. Um, as opposed to the S950, which is a mono sampler. Still nice for pads sometimes, but yeah. I'm also using the EMU because I've recently upgraded the operating system, so I've got some additional filters to play around with in there, so that should be interesting. So the EMU can actually record a really clean sound, but um, I'm going to use a low bandwidth just to give ourselves a, a bit of extra grit. Okay, sweet. So now the sample's inside the EMU. I've set a little bit of a loop at the end of the sample. Um, so there's a few reasons for that. Like, Firstly, um, in order to save space inside the machine, we've recorded a relatively short sample, but to get more sustain out of that, we need to set a loop. Um, it also creates an interesting effect that you hear a lot in old school tracks where the, um, the loop will revolve at a different speed depending on how high or low I play it on the keyboard. Um, so yeah, that's quite an old school vibe. Great. So next I'll have a bit of a play with the filters inside the ESI 32. Um, I'm just gonna fiddle around and see what different ones do. So this one's just uh, an envelope on a low pass filter. I'm not really sure I'm digging this one, but there's definitely scope for experimenting with these. All right, cool, so that's it for today. Um, I'll try and find some more time to do other stuff down the line. But like I say, there's a link down in the description. Jump in, grab, um, I'm not sure how many samples I'm gonna put in there for now, but there'll be a handful. Maybe down the line I'll run some breaks through the samplers and, and do some stuff like that and give you guys a link. Um, so please like and subscribe. You can buy me a coffee down below. It's all going to help. And uh, check out my music on Bandcamp. We've got a lot more coming this year. So big up. Take it easy, people.